Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to look at an Odroid XU4 and some related accessories which have been sent for review by my friends at Hardkernel. The XU4 has a reputation for being a very powerful single board computer, so let's go and take a closer look. So, here we have our box server Odroid goodies. You can see it's even got my name on it. It must be for me. And if we open it up, you can see lots of things in here. I guess that's the power supply. This is a, a case. There's various things under here, but we'll get to the accessories a bit later on. We'll start out with the, the board itself. If we just get inside here, oh, I can see a single board computer. There we are in a crinkly packet. I have Mr. Scissors on hand to get inside here. So we'll just cut in there. And uh, here we are. I've not cut well enough, have I? Deary, deary me. Let's have another go, Chris. I'll finally get in this time. There we are. Too well sealed. There we are. Here is the Odroid XU4 single board computer, which is sold by Hardkernel for $59. Now, I'm sure the first thing you've noticed is you've got a large heatsink on this board, this nice blue and eyes aluminium heatsink. And on top of that, we've got a temperature control fan, which will come into play when it's needed. And I actually think it's very good to see a single board computer which has got a large heatsink and fan on the board from the start. It recognises this thing might get hot. I should point out that you can buy this board with a passive heatsink or you can switch out this heatsink and buy the passive heatsink from Hard Kernel and fit it yourself. The passive heatsink is much taller. You won't fit this thing in the same space in the same cases, but at least you've got this option. But for me personally, I'd like to see I've got the board which has got the fan on the heatsink. It's got some proper cooling. Now, of course, under the heatsink, we've got a system on a chip, and here this is a Samsung Exynos 5422, which features a big little 64-bit octa-core CPU. Yes, we've got eight cores on this board, four ARM Cortex-A15 cores running at 2 GHz, and four ARM Cortex-A7 cores running at 1.4 GHz. We've got a lot of processor power on this board, hence we've got the heatsink and fan. The uh, GPU on the system on the chip is an ARM Mali T628, six cores running at 600 megahertz. And also on this board, we've got two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Now, if we look under the board, there's not a lot underneath on this board. The main thing to point out here is we do have a, a connector for an eMMC module, which means we can fit eMMC. This board can be booted from a micro SD card or it can be booted from an EMC card. I'll talk more about that later on. We'll be fitting one of those to the board later in the video. Anyway, for now, let's turn it back the other way and have a look along the sides of the board. Starting with what I would call the front edge, we have an Ethernet socket. This is one gigabit Ethernet. And next to that, we've got a full-size USB 2 socket. Next to that, we have got a power connector. This is a connector for a 2.1 millimeter inner, 5.5 millimeter outer, requiring five volts at up to four amps. Next to that, we've got a micro SD card slot, which supports UHS-1 cards. And next to that, we've got a full-size HDMI connector. This is HDMI 1.4, supporting up to 1080p. Moving around and up a bit, on the next edge, we then have a boot mode selection switch. This allows you to select booting either from the micro SD card or from eMMC. And next to that, we have the first of two GPIO connectors here. This is a 12-pin GPIO connector. Moving around again, we have another GPIO connector. Down here along the edge of the heatsink is a 30-pin GPIO connector. And then next to that, we have a power switch. And finally, and perhaps most excitingly on this side, we have got two full-size USB 3 ports. Lastly, and moving to our fourth and final side, no one's made a five-sided single board computer yet, we have a serial console port, a UART socket, and next to that, we have a connector for the real-time clock battery backup. So if you want to maintain your real-time clock while the power is off, you can connect a battery to this connector, and Hardcover will sell you all of those for $2.50. And there we are. We've looked all around the Odroid XU4 single board computer. Final thing to say is I haven't mentioned Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You may have noticed that, and that's because there is no wireless connectivity on this board. Right, having looked at the uh, 
board itself. Let's go and look at some of the accessories. And I should note that the, the board costs $59 itself. The accessories are on top of that. Here's the box, if you remember. Uh, the first thing we saw in the box was this uh, case. They make a variety of cases. Let's get this out of a little, little bag. This is obviously a clear case. You can get one, I think, in black, which obviously isn't clear, but that's a, a nice little case. And this costs uh, $5.40. Here is the, uh, the power supply, which is, I think, uh, $5.50. You'll need a power supply with the appropriate connector on the end. Remember that uh, 2.5 millimeter and 5.5 millimeter jack. And I particularly want you to have the right power supply because the Odroid can draw up to four amps. Now it probably doesn't draw anywhere near four amps if I'm just gonna be running it without any peripherals attached or anything. It's gonna draw a lot of power like a drive, but uh, you might need all that power. This is a clearly a European adapter. There's also a US adapter. I'll have to put that into an adapter to make it work, but I'm sure I can do that. We've also here got in the, uh, the case itself a few other things. Uh, there is a, a, a Wi-Fi module here. They sell a range of Wi-Fi modules on the uh, Card Kernel website. This is their latest one. This is the, the Module 5, Wi-Fi Module 5, which uh, I presume is a standard USB device. This costs uh, $18, but there are Wi-Fi modules available from, uh, I think it's about $4.80 all the way up to $18 for this Module 5. And finally in the box, last thing we had here was our uh, eMMC card. So let's just get that out, this uh, tiny thing. And uh, as you can see, it's also got with it a, a micro SD adapter. So this is the uh, eMMC card, which stands for an embedded multimedia card. These things are quite commonly used in things like smartphones and also in some of the uh, cheaper laptops you get these days which have got a flash storage so these are much cheaper to use than an SSD but they give you better performance than a micro SD card. And indeed hard kernel will give us an example of that, they give us this nice table which indicates that an eMMC card is about seven times faster than a class 10 micro SD card and about four times faster than a UHS-1 card as you can use on the Odroid XU4. Now, as you can see, we get this with a micro SD adapter, which means to put an operating system onto this, what you can do is if we flick it over, you'll see on the back, it's got its connector there, and that connector would connect onto the connector on here. This would go into a micro SD uh, slot on, on a device or on a PC or something, and you could therefore use that to put an operating system onto your eMMC card. However, if you buy one of these from Hard Kernel, you can probably see here, to get the right way around, this actually is a hard kernel uh, eMMC card, they branded it on there. It will come with an operating system on it, and you can buy it either with a Linux operating system on it or an Android operating system on it. And this card, I'm pretty certain, has got a Linux operating system on the card. As you can see from the sticker, this is a 32 gigabyte card. A 32 gigabyte card costs $41.50. And they start at 8 gigabyte cards at $20.50, 16 gigabyte cards at $25.50, all the way up to a 64 gigabyte card for $62.50, even more than the cost of the actual board itself. But it's nice, I think, you can buy your Odroid XU4 and add the flash memory, the faster flash memory, when you want to, to do that. So there we are. There's all the peripherals we've got with our Odroid XU4. I think it's high time to put them all together and to boot up an operating system. So, setup here should be nice and simple. All we need to do is first of all to flick the board over and we need to fit the uh, eMMC card, which is gonna be a, a delicate operation, I imagine, but it should fit in fairly straightforward. We put that down there and, uh, oh, clicked into place. Actually, that was very straightforward. That's now fitted to the board. Next thing we'll do is to uh, get the case. Here we have a little case here, which uh, clearly must come apart like that and the board needs to fit in the case, so I'll get on with that. There we are, all together. Slightly confused me because one side on the bottom has screws, one side is a, is a clip side, and I think I've also not put all the screws in. There's some internal screws I haven't put in, but uh, it seems extremely solid, so I think we'll, we'll leave it like that. As self-tapping screws, I'm gonna take them out for the sake of it. So now I just need to add things like power, so I'll uh, connect in the leads from the uh, power adapter and the other kind of stuff. And there we are, we now have the uh, Odroid all set up so we can boot into an operating system. And here we are booting into Linux 
on the Odroid XU4. The machine sitting there with its little lights flashing and things, or we've now got some text on the screen, all the usual startup stuff. And oh, black again, the uh, tension is killing us, isn't it? But no, we've got a, a screen arrived here. As you can see, we're going into Ubuntu Mate. And do it to Odroid, I think is the password. That'll get us in, that is good. You can, of course, change that. But uh, here we are, running Linux on the uh, Odroid XU4. And it gives you a nice uncluttered desktop, a nice lean installation with uh, some of the things you need, but not too much to clog up your single board computer. Just flick down here, you'll see we've got the basic accessories here, some graphics stuff. Uh, we've got the Chromium web browser. We've got the Firefox web browser. Office is there with all the usual LibreOffice stuff you'd expect. Let's just dip into the internet. Let's go to the Chromium browser for a second just to prove it works. And we can, uh, from that, in a second when it gets there. Come on, Chrome launch up. What are you doing? And here we are in Chrome. And of course, we can go to the world's favorite website just to prove the web works on this computer. It does. That's uh, very good. Now, I'm not going to take you around this in detail because it's an operating system on a single board computer. You've seen those before. But I thought we'd just uh, look at a couple of things because I think that they're interesting. First of all, we'll look at the uh, disk usage analyzer. And I just thought I'd show you this because it shows that when you have a 32 gigabyte EMMC module fitted, it comes to a 30.8 gigabytes formatted available. You'll see there's only 4.5 gigabytes used for the operating system. And that's even after I've applied some updates to the operating system. So it will be perfectly possible to run the operating system off an eight gigabyte EMMC card or indeed an SD card if you wanted to. So I thought I'd show you that. The other thing I just thought I'd show you, because it's just exciting, I think, really, let's go to System Tools and go to the System Monitor. And uh, here in a second when it comes up, we can see we've got our uh, eight CPUs. It's just nice to see the eight cores actually sitting there running. It seems to like CPU core six the most. That seems to get most of the work. Don't know why, but it always does. Anyway, we've now seen ourselves running Ubuntu Mate on the Odroid XU4. Given that the XU4 has this boot selector switch, it seemed almost impolite not to put an image onto an SD card and to boot into another operating system. And so here we are in Android on the XU4. And this seems to run very nicely indeed. And indeed, if we pull up the uh, applications here, you can go to the browser and you'll see this is where I got the image from. This is the Odroid wiki at wiki.odroid.com. We'd obviously go to the XU4 for the board we've got here. And you can see there's all sorts of operating system images available, Linux and um, Android and all this sort of stuff. Quite a lot of third party images too. People have obviously been experimenting with this board, lots of things you could install. So I haven't tried all of those, but certainly I've done okay so far with Ubuntu Mate and Android. And uh, it's nice to see in the uh, applications here, we've got an update utility. And we've also got an Odroid utility for allowing us to do things like uh, controlling the fan. So you can control the fan to your heart's content with this. And you can also do things like controlling the screen resolution, which isn't always that easy under Android on a single board computer. So there we are. We've seen the XU4 running a second operating system. The Odroid XU4 is a very nice single board computer with a wide range of accessories, great online documentation, and a broad variety of operating systems available. Now, I'm sure some of you want some performance benchmarks, and in a few videos' time, I'll be making another XU4 video where I'll do some benchmarks and also compare it to some other single board computers, most obviously a Raspberry Pi 3, and maybe also an ASUS Tinkerboard. But now that's it for this time. If you've enjoyed this video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.